Hi everyone, you're listening to Scaling DevTools, the show that investigates how DevTools go from zero to one. I'm joined today by Ramiro Nunez Docio, who is growth marketer at Superbase and has previously worked as a marketer for Ably and Auth0, which may be familiar to you as they are also DevTools. I am actually a big fan of Superbase and if I have to introduce Superbase, it is that it solves all the things that you have to do when you want to get a project off the ground really quickly. It was previously that Firebase was the best way to do this for kind of getting your auth and your database up and running really quickly. And Superbase came along and they addressed all the teething issues that Firebase had where you kind of get locked in and they made an open source alternative that actually has like a, a really strong foundation. So I'm using it in a project and it's really great. So I am really excited to speak with you, Ramiro. Thanks so much for joining. Thanks a lot for the invitation. Happy to be here. Ramiro, Superbase is arguably like the hottest dev tool right now. So I just wondered what your marketing approach is. Yeah, in some ways, like we don't do the usual marketing that you see out there. We have a, a different approach that is sometimes just showing and promoting like the developer culture just like and building the brand well with that right we care about getting in touch and like connecting with developers and because like the product is used can be used by any type of developer right you see that there's yeah, web developers looking to not think about the backend maybe the majority but the super base being built in by with open source tools, you know, you can use any uh, side of the product anywhere. So yeah, like uh, it's kind of like an open way of getting to them. And yes, of course, we also talk about our features and integrations, but that's not the main way of doing it, right? Like we don't start by that. What we are doing also is building a brand, which is sometimes something like very overlooked in this industry. Sometimes, you know, like people just go for like more like direct approaches or growing quickly uh, and they forget about what matters, which is like building a brand, having a great product with a big focus on developer experience. Another two key things from Superbase is something that I always preach and is having your the founders involved in you know building community and in marketing uh, from the start. So you can see that with a couple, Anand, um, the CEO and CTO, and co-founders, you know, like uh, talking with developers, listening to their feedback, answering support tickets, engaging with the community. Yeah, like uh, if something is not working, they're going to be there uh, acknowledging the error. So it's something very important. Being active on social media, right? Like it's, it's very important nowadays and especially for the founders. I saw this also. It's a really cool story of like with um of Zero's uh, CTO and co-founder, Matthias Woloski. Yeah, like he was always there, right? Like getting customer feedback, doing like user research on Twitter, just like acknowledging the feedback, uh, saying like, uh, yeah, when something was working, was not working, right? Like uh, trying to fix that. And this was from the early days till now so he was there from the beginning right like uh, working closely with the community providing feedback and you could even see it in the uh, last few months salio zero had a downtime like a couple of months ago like really long downtime and you could see him answering on twitter to each of the complaints saying sorry about this we're working hard on fixing i'll keep you updated and we are talking about a cto with a 6.5 billion uh, exit right who's like deeply cares about developers and the users and just like was there while trying to fix uh, the problem so yeah that's like what i mean by having the founders involved deeply in community building marketing another thing that we do really well is uh, listening and engaging yeah we we superbase is a product built with uh, open source technologies uh, right so like we give a voice to anyone that is building on top of Superbase or using war, using one of uh, our features and we boost, right? Like uh, we we see like people coming to us 
and then, you know, like tell me what they're building and we help amplify that message. And that kind of ties in with this very surprising fact that you are the only full-time marketer at Superbase. Yeah. So I'm the first marketing hire and the only one at the moment. I just want to say that I'm the only full marketer, right? Like, because, well, everyone does marketing in the company. We have a several team with the four people. The founders, again, are very uh, important uh, in our marketing and, and everyone in the company. So like for launch weeks, we have our engineers writing blog posts, documentation, participating in the live streams, in the Twitter spaces. So everyone does their part. Yeah, and that kind of ties again onto the launch weeks, which are a very interesting way of doing marketing. I think Paul was saying that you only do marketing during launch weeks and then it's like you don't do any marketing in between or at least that's what he spends his time on. Yeah, launch weeks, it's, it's pretty crazy, right? Like they have become a phenomenon and they're deeply tied on how we ship products. Uh, you know, they set up the way we, we ship, the, the time frames. One thing also is that we're con- constantly shipping. It's not just launch weeks. We are always, you know, like doing announcements, we're releasing new things, we also believe in launching several times, right? I've been learning also that approach of like, you know, like launching something several times or not waiting till the, it's like in the perfect shape to do it. So you can see that, you know, sometimes we do, yeah, beta, then like fully release. Uh, we also gather user feedback in, in the meantime, so we can improve the feature or, or product. But, uh, but yeah, like, uh, and that's like, One of the things we do between launch weeks, right? Like really focus on feedback and getting the the features uh, ready. Uh, And then with launch weeks, we focus on top of the funnel and uh, marketing them hard and getting as new ables as possible. uh, While also, you know, providing the news to our existing users and community. One of the things that I imagine must be really hard is when everyone's talking about Superbase and, and you do it, things are going so well, how do you kind of keep focus when you hear so much positive feedback in the community? At the moment, regarding success, one of the things uh, we are uh, focusing is on uh, adoption, right? So like we are bringing a lot of new users all the time, but uh, we want to help people build fast and, you know, get the, the products uh, to market as quickly as possible. Uh, so one of the things, uh, one of our most important metrics is like weekly active da- databases. That's doing really well. So like uh, people, they don't just sign up, but they also use Tivate, uh, Superbase, uh, uses, uses in production. And of course that we also want to build a sustainable business, hosting uh, 200 uh, 50k databases is 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 not cheap so we are also look at revenue i think ant sends you an email maybe automatically when you don't use your database yeah so um at the moment yeah like uh, we put the database to sleep if there's no use right because it has a cost infrastructure <laughs> it's not cheap <laughs> It kind of kickstarts me to like, oh, I really should get back on that personal project though. Yeah, it it also has, right, as a growth tactic, right, to get people back in it. So yeah, it works in in, in many ways. Like We nudge people to like, remember we're here, continue working on your project. I know that one of the things that is your kind of your speciality, right, is working with DevRel teams. Yeah, so I've been doing this for many years. I think that, yeah, that's like one of the things I'm. Yeah, I like doing the most, and uh, thankfully, right, like I'm good at doing it. Uh, which is, yeah, helping uh, several teams embrace marketing in some way, whether it is from like the process point of view or kind of improving, having a better understanding on what we have to do, why, how to measure, tackling the goals that the business uh, needs. Uh, so yeah, I work with them in creating more like targeted content or more be more strategic about what we should talk about, uh, how to create content, how to distribute it. That's also a thing I'm very passionate about content distribution and uh, and yeah, all with you know finding the balance right. 
because me not being a technical person, right? Like um, I, I work with them on getting that technical knowledge and, you know, like, yeah, like for example, proposed content creation process, you know, like uh, I've introduced to many DevRel teams to debrief and outline the steps that are key for content creation and help, you know, improve the creation and the the effect, the results of the content. So you, you mentioned there about like kind of the process and like briefs and stuff. Are there any other areas that you like see when kind of marketers are working with DevRel that like could be done better, like quite frequently? Yeah, so distribution is one, right? Like distribution is super important. It's not just about like creating content, but also making sure it's seen by the right people. Uh, so a distribution process uh, also it's uh, it's key um, and working with them also like identifying places to distribute where's like communities newsletters you know like discord groups also and also reusing content right uh, and repurposing that's also you could see that inside distribution right like the content repurposing uh, but yeah just like not just do something and let it there but also see like how we can reap more benefits, uh, more uses, where is a video into other formats or a topic itself, right? Sometimes it happens that a DevRel person will acquire knowledge of a topic, right? To create a video or a blog post. If that's successful, we should continue tackling that, right? We should put that knowledge to good use or, you know, continue delving into other areas of that topic, just reusing and repurposing that in other formats identifying the topics that we should uh, also like talk about is something I do, uh, right? Where is by, uh, you know, like frameworks, for example, in fact, which, which ecosystem should we focus, right? Like which like uh, programming language should we do? Sometimes it's like, you know, from the content point of view, but also, you know, from the product, right? Like should we build an integration with this new tool or is there a framework now you know that like we should focus on where is this from the community point of view, where is from like it's gonna bring revenue, uh, how our product works with that framework. That's something I also like really enjoy doing. I guess that sounds like there's so many kind of moving parts, especially when you start thinking about the product strategy. So I suppose is it like something that you decide together with the founders and with the DevRel team or? I have like a process, right? Like for identifying from like several aspects, right? Of like where to focus, like, right? like where, for example, uh, you know, if the new SD need to be built or, you know, like sometimes you, you're not just going to go and build one just because of, right? Like a good tactic is just starting by generating some content to validate uh, that the users, you know, are enjoying and then are going to, from that content, you know, sign up and use the your product uh, and then also right like that our product works well with that um, framework or tool that we want to to focus more and in that aspect you work with like founders or you know the product team this i've done in, in our companies not currently at superbase but yeah yeah that's super interesting actually because it sounds like you're kind of validating the product side of things with the marketing yeah, you use even like uh, things like SEO, right? Is there an SEO like or is there like search? Search can be, right? Like a number that you put. Is there like, yeah, how big the community is? Yeah, enabling we're like looking into uh, which frameworks uh, we should focus. And then let's, does this framework have like a, at least like a real time provider? It's like, does this framework have something with real time, right? Like uh, we would be com Pitching with something inside the same ecosystem. Um, what is already there, right? Like with other, which other products, similar products, or like competitors are already focusing this ecosystem. It sounds like this is like really hard stuff. Like this is not easy work. How do you kind of measure like the success on something like that when it has so many kind of moving parts? Yeah, that's a very good question, right? Well, it's important to set up you know, like metrics, KPIs, the beginning and, you know, actually report on them on a on a certain period. Yeah, and just like, you know, I think one of the things is just when you decide on what you're going to track, what, which, which is the success criteria, 
right? Like really go hard into that and use it also to focus. It gets harder, right? Like when you also want to align that with the business needs and else, just defining the success, uh, right? It's the same with the uh, an experiment, right? Like uh, it's about saying, okay, how hypothesis, how is this going to work? Set up metrics to measure uh, and then see what happens and iterate to get closer to those metrics. One thing I wanted to circle back on, just because it's something that I find really difficult, even with the Scaling DevTools podcast, is like how to distribute content. And a lot of what I find is like kind of engaging in communities. If you just do like a kind of hit and run, like, hey, here's my stuff. Like, hi, everyone that I've never spoken and engaged with. Here's my yeah. stuff. It just usually just bombs and maybe you kind of create a negative effect. But then engaging with these things takes time. So it's like, how do you do it? <laughs> yeah, it's tricky. One of the things is when you do a long-term plan, right? So for example, with Superbase, you know, Next.js, right? Like um, it's something that is not a, a one-time thing, right? Like, uh, and we have like in like DevRel specialized or also Svelte, right? We have one of our DevRel's, Andrew Silentworks, he's the Svelte uh, DevRel. So, you know, like by having him promoting the content, going to these communities, going to these like forums, was Reddit, uh, was like Slack, you know, is different because like he's not going to do just that just once, but it's going to be continuous, right? And that's also again when the focus or, you know, or like uh, sometimes, you know, having the long term into, in, into something, right? Like base. Another thing, yeah, sometimes it's better to use like for the DevRels to do the, the distribution, right? Like, uh, and help as much as possible because they are like the, the public faces, like building their brand with the communities, with the uh, ecosystems, right? Like it also helps to get a better reception of this promotion. Yeah, so it's like, you're not just doing these short-term things. You're like picking your focus areas and you're like doing the hard stuff, which is like, Having DevRel yeah. teams and... and and it depends on each company, each product, right? Like Superbase again, it's uh, we can write content about whatever basically because we do so many things and it can be used by so many people. But uh, yeah, like on the content side of things, right? DevRel, we're focusing on web developers at the moment, and you know we have like these like five communities or ecosystems, frameworks, however you want to call them, that yeah, like we are active in, right? Like by creating content, by help, helping them, right? When you say you focus on web developers, I know for Firebase, like one of, I mean, I used Firebase with a mobile app and I know it was like a really big kind of like way in for them. Is it something that you've like purposely like spent less like marketing attention on or... So like mobile developers? Yeah, no, like, no, because like one of our strongest and the one we're focusing the most is Flutter, right? Mm, and, and even yeah. Flutter being a Google framework, Firebase, yeah. uh, we're seeing huge reception and like mm. Flutter developers love Superbase. I guess also, like, again, the, the focus thing is about how you structure the team. And again, right, like we have a DevRel, Flutter DevRel, Tyler, who is great, like it's a machine, knows a lot about Flutter, like loves being active. The content he creates is great, super, you know, like always like looking to help the community. And yeah, it's doing really well. Like we just moved our Flutter SDK uh, to be like fully supported. We released the V1 and people are loving it. Yeah, we see a lot of Flutter products building integrations with Superbase uh, because of that. And even we have like this case of things, Flutter Flow, like uh, um, uh, this product that we want the Superbase integration. They have a Firebase, but they've been, you know, in social media in the last weeks and months, just like we want uh, uh, Superbase. That's really cool. So one last question, Ramiro. I saw that you're like huge on Twitter and that seems to be like a massive focus. Um, but then like TikTok and stuff like that, I think you're like less of a focus on. And I just wondered like, how do you think about channels and like where to reach developers as someone that's currently trying to do some stuff on TikTok as well? <laughs> hmm. 
Yeah, so you're right about the focus. Um, so being the only pure marketer, right, and uh, our devrel team also, you know, being involved in parts of the product, like for example, you know, the odd helpers, um, integrations. So we can tackle everything as we would like. So we double down on Twitter and YouTube and Hacker News because they're like really effective for us as a channel. But we are definitely uh, open to um, expanding to our channels if we had the right people, uh, if we can find the right people. So like if uh, anyone is listening and, you know, you're a creative person and you want you like to come and run our TikTok and Instagram accounts, get in touch because we'd love to chat about this. You get the opportunity to do creative things with a very cool product and a really like very engaging community. That would be a cool job. Yeah. Romero, I think that's all we've got time for now. That was super fun. Thank you so much for your time. Where can people learn more about Romero and about Superbase if they're interested? So Superbase, of course, at Superbase on, on Twitter or in YouTube. We're very active on Twitter, as you know. And myself, yeah, you can follow me on Twitter, Ramiro ND. Also add me on LinkedIn. I'm always happy to chat with anyone about uh, marketing, developer marketing. I'm, I'm very lucky to not to call this my passion, not only my my, my works. That's what we, we want, passionate dev tool lovers on the podcast. <laughs> Thanks so much. Um, and thanks everyone for listening and we'll see you again next week. 